Hey everybody, it's Ryan with LED Gardener, and I'm back with some more horticulture lighting group stuff today. In this review, we're going to be looking at the quantum board reflectors. So what the hell is a quantum board reflector? Well, the reflectors are these little pieces of aluminum that you bolt onto either side of your quantum board, and what they do is reflect, obviously, a lot of the light that would have escaped or maybe would have gone just about straight sideways off of the board down onto the canopy of your plants. So it just kind of focuses and channels all this light that otherwise would have been wasted. These things have been available for a little while now on the HLG website, but you know, I really haven't seen too many of them in the wild. It doesn't seem like a lot of people are using them in their builds. But luckily in my last little package of stuff to test, uh, my friends over at HLG sent me a couple of them. So what better time than now to bolt them onto one of these 260 watt kits. So that's two QB288s on a HLG 240H C2100 driver and find out if they actually do anything. Uh, is it worth buying? Are they just sort of a waste of time? Let's bolt one on. We'll find out, do some testing in open air as well as a 3x3 tent and see if they're worth incorporating into your build. As far as installation goes for these things, it's pretty straightforward. You just pop out the three screws on the outer edge of the quantum board on each side, then slide that reflector in and replace the screws. And it's a pretty good design. I mean, it doesn't really interfere with any of the wiring or any of the functionality of the board. So that's kind of nice. But just pop them in. I'm using a drill here because <laughs> I've put these screws in and out so many times that I'm just sick of using a screwdriver. So I use my little impact and get them almost all the way and then just kind of snug them up with the screwdriver so I don't kill them with the impact. You know, I think my favorite part of the installation is pulling that little plastic piece off of the shiny part. God, that is so satisfying. That's like my favorite part of any electronics with a shiny surface. So that was definitely a big highlight for me in this install. Right now, I think the perception for these reflectors is that they would only be useful in an open air setting and that you wouldn't really need them for a tent. But I figured why not test both scenarios and maybe these things will benefit your light even in a tent despite having reflective walls already. It doesn't hurt to try, right? So I took measurements in a 3x3 in the open air without reflectors, then I added the reflectors, remeasured, and then moved over into a 3x3 tent and did the same thing. And you'll notice in the PPFD charts that the bottom part of the tent reads a little tiny bit lower and that's just because obviously I don't have that last wall on it's not totally sealed so I can still get in and move this thing around but that would explain why the numbers at the top of the chart are just a tiny bit higher because it's got a full surround of reflective walls all right let's move on to the test in this test I was using as I mentioned an HLG 240 HC 2100 driver and the test current was 2100 milliamps I used a distance of 24 inches between the light and the sensor just because I think this is probably the best approximation of what a real life scenario would be. I found as you get closer and closer, like say down to 18 inches or so, the reflectors are choking too much light and not really allowing enough to get to the outer edges of something like a three by three, which is where you should have one of these 260 watt kits. So I figured 24 inches is a good place uh, just to at least show the effect that these reflectors have. And you know, chances are, if you're looking for reflectors, then you've probably got a fair amount of distance between your lights and your plants anyway. So this is a good place to start. Having a look at the numbers here, the reflectors didn't really work how I expected them to. You know, I kind of figured that the outer edges would really benefit from having these things, but it was kind of the opposite. I mean, if you look at the perimeter of the left compared to the right, generally you're seeing an increase of like 10, 20 ppfd in the corners and on the top and the bottom the biggest significant change was on the like the left center and the right center sides where we jumped from 260 ish to you know mid 300s almost 100 ppfd gained in the center of each side but everywhere else is almost the same so what did I get out of this? Well, reflectors do work, but maybe not how you thought they would. Around the perimeter, in most places, you're only gaining a little tiny bit, and the real increases are found right in the middle, you know, around the one foot square, even around the two foot square to a lesser extent. But you don't lose anything by going to them, which is kind of cool. A gain of 150 micromoles per meter squared per second in the center is no joke. That's, that's a pretty big increase. And I found that by kind of playing with the angle of each of the reflectors, I could 
sort of balance this number out. So rather than doing 650 in the middle, if I bent the reflectors a bit, that might drop down to say 600, but I might gain maybe 50 micromoles on the edge of a three by three. And I was able to get a little bit of gain out of it by widening the angle on them at the sacrifice of the hot spot in the middle, which is fine with me. Now, moving on to the question that everybody is asking, and by everybody, I mean probably about two or three people, do these reflectors make sense if you have a tent? So I set up in a 3x3 tent, and the effects of the reflectors were not quite as pronounced as they were in the open air, but the results were pretty much the same. The sides, or outer edge, gained a little bit, but the middle portion benefits the most from adding these reflectors. In this case, it's not as much, maybe 50 or 60 PPFD on average. And then around the outer perimeter, you're getting very minimal gains, 10 or 20, with the exception of the center sides, which is more like 30 or 40. All things considered, is it worth it then to buy these reflectors and install them? In an open air environment, I would say yes, absolutely it is, because you're gaining like 30% in the middle of your 3x3 by adding these things, and you're not losing anything. And like I say, you can kind of tinker with that by widening those reflectors out, so you reduce the hotspot in the middle and increase the perimeter a tiny little bit. Is it worth it in a tent to have these reflectors? I don't think so. I mean... It's a little bit of extra hassle and cost to gain, say, 50 or 60 micromoles in the middle and almost nothing on the outside. So, no, I don't think it's worth running these things in a tent. Well, that's going to do it for this quick little review. Thank you very much to HLG for sending me this stuff to test. I absolutely live for this stuff. So if you're a DIY LED manufacturer and you want to see your gear tested, shoot me a private message. And if you're still watching this, do me a favor, dog. Go to ledgardener.com slash forum and sign up for an account. We got a really solid group of people and we're starting to gain some traction in there, but the more the merrier. Shout out to the regulars like Jolly Green Giant, B-Volt, Ted, Max Headroom, Majorana, Grower, Tune. You guys rock. These are some smart cookies. So if you're looking to get some help with your DIY LED build or you just want to chat about the tech, make an account and we'll see you there. Thanks, guys.